we will be recording this and we will have a um, on-demand replay of this on YouTube and it'll be sent out after um, early next week in a follow-up email to the email that you signed up for this webinar um, with. <laughs> and um, if you have any questions during the webinar, feel free to ask in chat. Uh, say like one pops in your head and you want to type it out, um, go ahead. Uh, we're going to have a Q&A at the end of the webinar uh, to go over everyone's questions. And um, if you have anything general about Signet, uh, like our phone number or anything like that, that I, um, that I could answer, I will answer directly in the chat. But other than that, um, feel free to ask any questions. Uh, we love them. So we'll be happy to do it. Great, thank you, Savannah. I'm gonna share my screen and I'm gonna count on you guys to tell me if you can see it. Thank you everyone for joining us, Savannah. Thank you again for um, kind of managing, managing the attendees while I was getting myself together. Uh, tonight, we're gonna to talk about how to write your perfect college essay. And I put air quotes around perfect. There's no such thing as a perfect college essay, but there is such a thing as your perfect college essay. Um, so um, every student has an essay that could be kind of the perfect embodiment of what they need to say to admissions officers. And that's kind of what we're after here. Um, and that's something that, that Signet um, really prioritizes throughout you know, all the work we do on admissions, but even on our academic tutoring or test prep or, or organizational coaching uh, practices, um, we really wanna make sure we're doing what's right for the student and helping the student grow, helping the student get to know themselves better and helping the student achieve what are the right results for them based on, you know, the amount of work they're putting in, what their goals are, all of these things. So uh, we take a very individualized approach. So I'm not going to give you a formula for, you know, write about this story um, and you'll have a perfect college essay because that story is going to be different for every single student. So what we're going to go through today is to talk about, um, you know, how to find your story and then what you should do with that as, as you move forward from there. Um, if any of you, before I you know, dive in, if any of you are dealing with students who are applying in the next two weeks, got an early deadline on November 1st or maybe even November 15th, um, definitely send us an email or put, put a question in the chat. I know you're under a lot of pressure right now. Um, this uh, may feel like it's coming too late. Um, and this process is of course a many weeks long or sometimes months long process of finding that story and writing it and revising it. So if uh, when I'm done here, you're like, that's beautiful, but I have no way to do that because you know I should have started this six months ago. Send me an email. There may still be some ways that we can help you. Um, but I think this presentation will be most helpful for uh, people who are looking forward to those December or January deadlines. So um, the first thing I want to say is don't be intimidated. Um, this is uh, a challenging process. I mean, the college admissions process is challenging in itself. It's very stressful. But writing is also challenging, especially writing about yourself. Um, and then trying to do it within a word limit is also very challenging. Um, but try not to be intimidated. This is your story. It's not about your grades or scores or activities. Um, and it's a story you're probably already telling. Um, but this time you just really need to condense it and crystallize it down into this easily digestible form. Um, so, you know, this shouldn't be the first time a student is thinking about this story that they want to tell. Um, we just need to figure out what they're thinking about and then get that into the story. So um, first we like to start with thinking about our goal. Um, what is the goal of the college essay? How is is it read? What is it meant to do? What is it meant to show about the student? Um, so uh, we say that college essays do three things really well. First is they give admissions officers a better rounded sense of you. So college admissions officers have things like numbers, your grades, your test scores. They have lists of the classes you've taken. They've got words from other people, your teachers, your counselor. They've got all of that stuff to try to understand what kind of a student you are, what you're capable of, what your intellectual curiosity is like. But this is the one chance that you as a student get to talk to the admissions officer directly in your own voice and tell them exactly what you want to tell them. Um, and so this is a place where the application really comes to life and you have a chance to kind of connect all these pieces of I do these activities and I take these kinds of classes or I enjoy having these 
kinds of conversations because this is the kind of person I am. So it's never going to give them the full picture of you, but it's going to really round out and fill out the picture of you that they're already getting from the other aspects of your, your application. So remember that it's a huge opportunity um, and one that shouldn't be wasted. Um, so it's also an opportunity for college admissions officers to confirm you're not a robot, you are a human, you are a person with um, desires and fears and values and aspirations. Um, and uh, finally, it, it shows them that you can communicate clearly. Um, and that's a really important thing that students don't often think about. I mean, obviously we don't want them making spelling or grammatical errors in their essays, but the structure of an essay can say something about how a student thinks or how good they are at communicating complex ideas. Um, so it's really important that, that you take that revision process very seriously as well. Um, so let's kind of zoom out a little bit and talk about what is the common application essay. Um, there are seven prompts. These are not the exact words, these are just sort of the gist of each of those prompts. The one, first one is share your story. Um, and this is often about a, a background or um, an interest that is so definitive of you that you feel like you have to share it. Uh, the second one is recount a time when you faced a challenge, setback or failure. And of course, you're supposed to say how you learned from that failure. Um, third, reflect like a time when you questioned or challenged a belief or idea. And this could be you challenge someone else's belief or idea or you challenge your own. Uh, describe a problem you've solved or you'd like to solve. This one is really there to try to get inside of a student's mind. What are they really passionate about? What do they really hope to make a contribution to? Um, five, discuss an accomplishment, event, or realization that sparked a period of personal growth and a new understanding of yourself or others. I find that pretty much any essay that a student's writing could fit that prompt. Um, that's a really good one because it, it prioritizes personal growth, which is really the thing that colleges want to hear about. Um, describe a topic, idea, or concept you find so engaging it makes you lose all track of time. Again, another one where they're just trying to see inside of a kid's head. Um, and then seven, share an essay on any topic of your choice. So really, it is open. Um, and I often tell students, don't pay attention to the prompts. Uh, we might read them over if they're really having trouble thinking about a story to tell. But it's more about first them understanding who they are and then telling that story and then figuring out which prompt it fits. These are so broad and there's so many of them. There's gonna be one that will fit whatever story they're telling. Now, um, one of the things that you can see through the actual wording of each of those questions, and I kind of hint at it, hinted at it with the personal growth question, is that there is an arc of each of these narratives that they're soliciting here. Something happened, it affected you personally, and in the aftermath, you grew right? You changed. Um, and uh, that is really key because a lot of times students just, they talk about something and then there's no sense of something happening to a character. Um, and I often talk to my students about, you know, the character of you in this story that you're telling has to come up against some sort of conflict and has to reflect and has to change and grow, right? The stories that we read, whether it's a short story or a novel, are not just a day in a life of a person where nothing really happens, right? Um, something has to happen for us to have interest in it, right? So they are telling this story just the way that a novelist tells a story. Um, one thing that students tend to understand is film. Like you wouldn't watch a movie just about somebody's day and you never get to hear their thoughts or see how they changed based on what happened to them. Um, that would be a really boring movie or show to watch, right? So think of it this way, they're, they're sort of composing, creating their own little film, introducing themselves to the world, right? Through a particular story. What's going on? Here we go. So in order to do this, it's, it's obviously takes a lot of prior thinking and, and planning. Um, so a last minute all-nighter will not cut it. I have so many students tell me, oh, I'm a great writer. I'll write it in a week. I'll write it in two days. I'll write it over Columbus Day weekend or whatever it is. Um, but it's really hard to do, hard to do well. Um, you might get a draft in a night, um, but you're gonna have to revise it and, and spend some time with it and really understand the bones of your story to make it a good one. Um, so we recommend that students use a calendar to plot a realistic timeline for themselves. And realistic means something different for every student. Some students are really fast writers and some students need a lot of time to kind of chew on material before they can get something out. 
So um, have them think about um, what their writing habits are like or what their writing process is like. Do they want to do this all at once or a little bit a day? I mean, five minutes a day can actually take you places. Um, and, you know, it might be easier to fit in than, you know, five hours over three different days. Um, do they need deadlines and accountability? What kind of deadlines? and who is gonna keep them accountable? Who are they gonna be accountable to? Because sometimes it's hard to be accountable to yourself. Um, so who do they trust to keep them on track? Is it gonna be mom or dad? Sometimes that can come with unwanted tensions. It might be a sibling, it might be a teacher, or it might be some sort of program that just reminds them when something is due or when they're supposed to do something. Um, there are a lot of uh, programs that will, you know, text you reminders or um, shut off your computer until you do the thing that you're, you said you were gonna do. Um, so there are a lot of ways to build that accountability in, but that's that's really key. Um, and we're going to go through each of these steps, but this is kind of what's involved in uh, building an entire uh, uh, essay from start to finish. You got to start with brainstorming. What is the story? Um, do some exploratory writing to see if that story actually has some meat that you can dig into. Um, then you're going to draft a thesis and an outline write a long first draft, revise your thesis, find the core of your writing and focus all of your rewriting around that, revisit for clarity and flow, show your essay to outside readers and editors, implement those revisions, and then do a final proofread before you submit. And each of these things take more than a day to do um, and are best done in uh, a long, over a long stretch of time because it, this is such a self-reflective process um, that you know, they may write something and reflect on it one day, but three days later, they may have a different realization if they spend a little more time thinking about it. So um, build time in for, for getting all of this done. Now, we'll dig into each of these phases, as I said. So the first is, is brainstorming. You want to view brainstorming as an active, ongoing process. You don't need to rush it. It's an era in your life. Um, and by that, I mean, you're going to do your first brainstorm, you're gonna come back to it. Even as you continue writing, you're gonna have more time to, uh, that you'll need to brainstorm if you need new material for a section of your essay or something like that. So um, it is it is an active process um, and uh, students shouldn't think that it's a five minute outline that they're gonna write because it, it does take a lot longer than that. Um, we usually recommend just writing all of their ideas down. Don't judge, just write. Um, think about all the things you could say about yourself. Think about you know the things your grandmother says about you. Um, you know the stories that other people tell about you. What your relationships are to other important people in your life. Just write it all down, and something is going to stand out. So you start to sift through that list. You pick your favorites, um, and then you're going to brainstorm some more. Um, because maybe you want to talk about how you're such an animal lover and you want to become a veterinarian ev uh, eventually. We need to hear this story, right? We, we're not just going to um, hear you tell us this. We need to live the story with you. You need to take us into this moment you realized you wanted to be a vet or the very first time you helped a hurt animal, whatever it is. So you've got a brainstorm for more scenes, more details. The the arc of the story has, uh, you know, three main sections, and there should be sort of um, brainstorms for each of those sections. So um, again, it's just a long, all-encompassing process. You're always brainstorming, um, and you shouldn't, in the brainstorming process, you shouldn't judge. Um, just get it all down, and then you can go back and um, sift through them afterwards for, for things that feel like they will con congeal into an essay. Um, and we do have some um, exercises that I like to, to recommend. We can send some of these out. Um, but one of the ones that I love the most is the sort of role-playing exercise. Um, and it's about the roles that you actually play in your life. So we have students write down three to six roles they play in their life. Maybe they're an older brother, they are a tutor, and they are a, I don't know, crew captain, let's say, right? Um, those are three different roles that they, they play in their life. Now, under each role, they want to brainstorm two events or objects that really exemplify that role. So I had a student, we did this exercise with once who was telling me he's a really good older brother. And the example that he thought of was he was at his younger brother's graduation and the kid was wearing, you know, graduation robes, but had shorts on underneath. So it looked like he was naked. And he 
gave his brother his pants um, for that graduation. And like, that's just such a charming story and also shows what a nice older brother he is. Um, and that ended up being the introductory story of this essay he wrote about how much he's learned by having a younger brother and, and learning to be an older brother. So you think of, you know, events, objects, you know, situations that can really show who you are, the best of who you are in that role. And then see where that takes you right? Um, what is that story or that object revealing about you? Um, how are you going to describe it? How are you going to fill in the backstory? How are you going to take this to a place where you grew or you're um, showing how you learned something? And then I mentioned this, um, you can use the, the common app prompts as a starting point for brainstorms, but really don't get attached to them. Um, and don't worry about answering every little question, sub question that's part of a prompt. Really, it's more about um, making them work for you. So you've got this story about giving your pants to your younger brother. Um, what prompt might fit that story? As opposed to, oh, I got to tell a story about uh, a time where I, um, I don't know, uh, a time where I um, challenged a, a belief or something like that, right? Because that, that starts to feel like a school assignment and it starts to feel like you're writing an essay for the sake of the prompt, right? It's not as authentic as I know this is who I am and I wanna show you this through this really charming story. So after you get some brainstorms done, you start kind of writing about the things that you brainstormed. Try to tell the story without shaping it. Again, that means no judgment. Uh, I often tell people to do uh, a free write where you set a timer and you can't take your pencil off the paper. You just write and write and write and write. Some students are intimidated by writing on a blank page, either on a computer um, or even by hand. Um, so I often tell them, set a timer for 15 minutes and record a voice message on your phone. And then go back and type that up and see where it takes you because there will be good ideas and there, there'll definitely be bad ideas in there too. Um, but just you've got to kind of be open to um, playing and being adventurous and seeing where your words take you. So try to write a scene, write some exposition explaining the scene. And as you're writing, you're going to feel like, ah, oh, that's not really working or, oh yeah, I could say more about this. That's the heat. You always want to move towards the heat, the stuff that is exciting the stuff that is insightful, the stuff that is personal. And then once you started doing that, you're going to get a working thesis. What are you excited to talk about, right? Um, and what is the overall takeaway of this essay? Um, if we go back to the example of my student who gave his pants to his younger brother, um, his thesis is about, you know, the uh, ways that he supported his younger brother and how that's helped him grow into the young man that he you know, aspires to be, right? You distill it down into one sentence and put that on a post-it note and put it somewhere that they can see because it's very easy to veer off from this. You get lost in details about the brother's graduation or, or you know, this thing that happened the next week or whatever. It ends up, those sorts of things end up being distractions, um, both in terms of the flow of the essay, but also in terms of um, the generating of content, right? You're gonna go down a rabbit hole and that doesn't actually relate to the thesis that you're trying to convey. Right, so keep that thesis really visible, um, and you know, know that you're going to change it a little bit as you write more, as you get more description out um, and stories out, and more reflection. You might see, oh, it's not actually about me being uh, an older brother; it's about me being, I don't know, supportive of my community, and then maybe they're they brought in their volunteer experience as well, not just supporting your brother, but that's an example of one way that he supports other people, right? So it may change, but it's important to kind of try to distill it down and keep it somewhere so that it stays in the front of your mind. And then you want to make an outline. You got to shape the story, right? So what we were talking about at the beginning, that arc of something happened, it affected you personally, and then you changed, right? So what are those three pieces of your story? What do you need to tell them in order to get those things across. Um, and those may just be your three paragraphs, three main paragraphs. This is not a five paragraph essay. I've seen really long paragraphs and I've seen really short paragraphs. I've seen essays that are like one whole, the whole thing is one paragraph. I wouldn't recommend that. It's hard to read. Um, but um, it's not so much that uh, there is a certain number of paragraphs you need to have, but certainly each paragraph should be about one 
clear idea um, and make sure there's a conclusion. Remind your reader what you need to take away or what they need to take away from the telling of the story, right? So you have an outline with your working thesis and then you write a long first draft. This is one of those pencil images that I was talking about earlier. Um, take your outline and fill it in. Right. And now a lot of students, even though I know all of their schools teach them how to use outlines, they don't use an outline when they're writing something. They'll do the outline, they'll turn that in, and then they write their paper. They're not even looking at their outline. Um, this is not one of those situations where that's going to be helpful for them because they're going to get way off track. So what I usually recommend is writing their outline on uh, like a Google document or a Word document and then actually typing in the paragraph underneath the outline heading. So essentially you're writing five short paragraphs or how many sections of however many sections of the outline you have but you're writing these discrete paragraphs for each section of the outline and just write as much as you need to for each of them you don't worry about the word limits yet um, but then you can kind of sew those pieces together right um, and if you're having trouble transitioning or you realize the two headings in your outline are actually about the same thing you can revise your outline you, you can revise your, those paragraphs but this way um, if you're writing them as separate paragraphs under each outline heading, if you do need to drastically change the order of things in your outline, it's not hard to do, right? You're not wedded to a particular structure yet. You've just got all these pieces that you can kind of move in and out however you need to. Um, and your first draft is not meant to be perfect. It's the first draft. That's what they're for, right? Don't stress about the phrasing. Don't worry about editing. Don't worry about word choice. Don't worry about grammar yet. Really. This draft is about getting the story down on paper, the whole story, right? And then as we move forward, we're gonna cut that down. Before we do that though, I wanna reverse that outline, okay? So a reverse outline is where you take something that you've written and you say, okay, read this paragraph. This is what this paragraph is communicating. And kind of on the right-hand margin, you've got um, a little summary sentence of, of what the content is saying. and then as you finish the summarizing each paragraph of your essay, you check if those little summaries match the outline of the essay that you intended to write, right? And sometimes they will, and that's great. Sometimes they won't. And you wanna question why it's not matching. Did you try to make it match the original outline, but the logic or the coherence just wasn't working? And so your reverse outline is actually a better order than what you had planned? Or did you just get distracted and you get off track and you just need to cut that paragraph out or change the framework of that paragraph a little bit? So compare those two things and see, see what happens. Now is the time where we start cutting down, right? And I mean, it's probably been two or three weeks since they've started brainstorming, right? Um, and they really want to get something that looks like an essay that they could submit. And here's where we really start to do that, right? You check in with yourself and think about, what this essay says to you that you've written so far, this, this first draft, does it reflect the thesis? Is it full of heat? Is it telling the reader what you wanna tell them? Or is that lost in description and details, right? So sometimes when you write a draft, your thesis will have changed because as you're writing, you're learning about what you're trying to say. Um, but revisit what your thesis is. Does it need to change or is that still the thesis you want to get to? Um, and then make sure your content matches that. Um, think about what is essential to telling this story. Do they need every single detail or do they just need one sentence of description, right? Um, and experiment a little bit. And one of the things I tell students to do is think about the balance of the essay. It should be roughly balanced between the story, the reflection, what that story meant and how it changed them, and um, the kind of growth, right? So um, I, I often tell students to think about like a movie montage, there's a conflict and your main character knows that they need to do something, right? To overcome this conflict. Then you have this little training montage, right? This is them doing the thing that they need to do. And then you have the success story. Right, And in a way, those three sections are sort of like um, the balance of this essay that I'm talking about, right? Like you have a challenge, you no need to overcome it. You do something to overcome it. This is you learning. And then um, the success is you uh, reflecting on, you know, how far you've come and, and the kind of person you've become. So once you've uh, 
focus on those things, kind of cut the essay down a bit. You do need to think about um, basic writing things like clarity and flow. Uh, one of the most helpful things a student can do in order to um, check for this is to read their essay out loud. Um, they could just read it out loud to themselves or they could read it out loud to somebody else. But I say read it out loud with a pen or a highlighter in hand and mark out parts that sound boring, they just seem off or there was an abrupt change. Um, particularly if they struggle to read a sentence, that's a sentence that needs to be revised, right? So you mark all of this out as you're reading your essay out loud. Then you go back to your document and you rewrite sections that are confusing where the writing is not clear, doesn't give a strong image. Um, once that's done, you really want to double check those transitions between all your paragraphs. And then um, try to, it's very hard, but try to read the essay in the mind of some grumpy person who is going to misinterpret your words. What could they possibly be misinterpreting? And how can you tighten up that section so that it's super clear what the message is and they can't come away with the wrong idea? That's a place where uh, another, an outside reader can be really helpful. So here we are at Outside Readers. So we recommend showing a revised draft to at least two outside editors, somebody who knows you really well, who might know the story already and can say, oh, that's, you know, that's not what happened or wouldn't it be better to just simplify this because they know the content that you're trying to describe. Um, and then someone who doesn't know you very well and see what they think about you after they've read it. Um, are they taking away something that you didn't intend? Or are they like, wow, I didn't know that about you or I didn't know that side of you. Um, and they feel like they got to know you better through, through reading your essay. Now ask them for your feedback. Um, that could include you know, grammatical stuff um, or just phrasing or organization. But one of the things that is also really important to check is what are they taking away from the essay? And is it what you wanted it, them to take away from it? So ask them for a list of three qualities that your essay demonstrates about you and see what they say. And if they're not tied to your thesis, if those are three qualities that you never intended to uh, communicate, then we gotta go back and revise. Now, um, a lot of students are really protective of their essays, particularly with mom and dad. They don't really want to show their writing. They don't want to be criticized. Or maybe they're talking about something personal that they've never really shared with their mom or dad before. Um, it may not be that serious, but you know, students have their own interesting relationships with parents. So um, they may not want to share it with you. Um, and I think it's important to respect that but um, you can insist that they share it with someone that you trust um, if it's not you directly. Um, but uh, students should also know that they don't have to accept every edit that someone gives them. Uh, especially if they're asking more than one person for feedback, uh, there may be a situation where there are just too many cooks in the kitchen and that can be really overwhelming for a student, um, particularly if those people are important in their lives, like how do they say no to a teacher who, um, you know, is writing their recommendation or has their grade uh, in their hands or, you know, do they have to choose the teacher's um, recommendations over what their mom says? That's a hard place for a student to be in, right? So um, keep that in mind as, as your student is getting these sort of outside uh, opinions um, that that is their essay and that their essay should be in their voice and should say exactly what they need to say. Um, and so if somebody is saying, oh, don't tell this story, then, you know, that's not exactly helpful. Um, and the student can ignore that. But if there are edits about grammar, punctuation, spelling, those are, those are things the students really do have to accept, right? So it's, it's not uh, all or nothing. Um, and students should use their judgment on, on what edits to take into play. And then um, in the final stages now, um, we don't want students to burn out. There is, of course, um, the the danger of getting so mired in this content that they content that they can't really see it anymore. So we recommend just putting it away for a few days, um, and then once they feel you know they've had enough distance, um, go back to the essay, reverse outline it again, make sure that outline makes sense and is communicating what they want it to commit to communicate. Do the reading out loud exercise again and revise it until they feel really happy about the message that they're putting across. Um, and then of course, use a spell checker, but also proofread by hand very carefully. There are a lot of things that spell check doesn't catch because it's actually a correctly spelled word, but it's a, you know, the wrong word in that sentence or something like that. One thing that I find helps is printing out the essay and having read it 
like on a piece of paper, it changes the way you see it somehow. Um, and that can be great for a final proofread. So I kind of sped through this. I hope it wasn't too fast, but now we have plenty of time for questions. So I'm going to stop screen sharing now and we can just kind of go to your questions. Feel free to type them in the chat. Um, I will see them and read them out to Sheila. Or if it's easier and you want to unmute yourself and just um, ask it that way too, we can do that too. I thought that that was a really great presentation, Sheila. Thanks, man. Really beautiful. Really knowledgeable. <laughs> But as I said, it's a process. And this sort of at, like assumes that you have, I don't know, six to nine weeks to write an essay. So if your student is in a different situation, um, definitely let me know and we can talk about what to do. Ray says, thanks. Oh, ah, here we go. Uh, Beth says, how long are essays usually? What is the word limit for essays? Yeah, so that's a great question, Beth. Um, there are a couple of different essay types that are required in the, um, college application process. So mostly we're talking about the common application essay, and that is got a 650 word limit. Um, and most students write somewhere between 575 and 650. You don't have to get all the way to 650. Um, in fact, I know that college admissions officers prefer reading shorter, more concise essays, though not too short, right? It still needs to tell a pretty significant story. But, um, you know, if you can do that in fewer words, if it ends up being 550 or 500, I think that's fine. Um, so that's the main essay. Um, there are a couple of other application platforms. You know, there's the universal college application. There's the coalition application. They all have about the similar 600 to 650 word limit. Um, but many schools have what we call a supplemental application, which does require um, several shorter essays. And those will have the word limits with the prompts. Usually they're 50 to 350 words, um, but that can really vary by college. Go ahead. Jane Jane asks, how many drafts do you recommend to write slash edit before reaching the final essay? That's a hard question to answer, actually. I think um, certainly no less than three, um, because there's always something, even the best writers um, revise their work several times. Um, I would say, though, that there is an upper limit. If you find that your student is just perseverating over this thing and they don't think their essay is ever finished, they may be, you know, striving for a perfection that is unrealistic and it might be time to just show their essay to some other people and get their thoughts on it um, to help them kind of stop because you can revise forever and that is sometimes not a useful <laughs> useful way to spend your time. So I would say if you're getting to 10 drafts, then you've got to kind of stop and think about, okay, what are my goals? Let me get back to first principles. What is my core, my thesis? Um, and, uh, you know, how am I, uh, how am I addressing that in this in this revision? And Mia asks, how do you make sure the essay reads more about you and shows who you are rather than just describing the story that you're writing about? Yeah, that's a great question, Mia. That's that's kind of a pitfall that a lot of students fall into. They're telling a great story and it takes up 500 words um, and they leave no room for that reflection. So that's why I was talking about the balance. Um, you really do need more reflection than description. Um, and description is fine, but it's got to serve a purpose. Um, so if you're just saying, oh, the sky was orange, to say that the sky was orange, um, that's not really helping. But if you're saying the sky was orange in order to set a mood, describe a time of day, and it like really connects to everything else, then that's fine, right? One of the things that I like to do with my students, um, they hate this, by the way, but they think they're done with their essay. And then I tell them, okay, we're gonna do one more exercise. And I'm gonna make them justify why every single word is in their essay. It takes a long time because they've written 600 some words, but every single word needs to be fighting for its place in this essay. It's such a limited amount of space that you can't have any fluff in there, right? Um, and so um, it's tedious, but it really helps us focus in again on our goal. What is the thesis that we're trying to communicate? Are we just trying to show that you can paint a pretty, pretty picture with words? No, we're trying to do that and tell them something insightful about you. Um, so we need to make sure that that is really um, the anchor of the essay, not description. Um, something that I want to add mm -hmm. as um, someone who doesn't really know much about uh, 
college application, the college application process besides what I went through in high school. Um, this might just be a fun thing to bring up to your student, uh, but something that I've come to realize personally is I, I've lost my common application essay uh -huh. and, and I haven't been able to find it. And I have, and I still have the laptop that I used back in uh, 2013 when I was first uh, got accepted into college. And I have looked and looked and looked and I didn't use Google. Um, I didn't use Google Docs or any of that. So I don't have it saved and I keep looking and I mm -hmm. wish so badly that I had saved it somewhere because now that I'm older, I wish that I could look, and I've talked to my friends about this too. I wish I could look back and see what Common App, what my Common yeah. App essay was because I don't remember it at all. Really? And wow. So I kind of, uh, I guess I recommend you as parents or as people writing your Common App essay to just recommend that they save it because I, I, I sincerely wish that I could remember. Well, I think I it's such a great, that's such a great tip, Savannah, because it, it is such a time capsule. And one of the things that we really try to do at Signet with, with everything that we do is, you know, we're really about encouraging personal growth and reflection. And um, I know I felt this way when I wrote my essays, I didn't have any help with it, but I felt this, like I went through a transformation writing those essays. I spent so much time thinking about like, who am I and how do I tell someone I am this way without, you know, bragging, without sounding like, oh, I'm just a, you know, a 17 year old trying to sound older than I am or, you know, whatever it was. And I feel like I really, um, was able to get to know myself in a way that I had never been prompted to before. Um, I found my college essay um, recently, like a couple months ago at my mom's house. And um, I remember it very well. I, like I wrote, kind of wrote this prose poem about like things that I liked, things that I valued. It literally said like, I love these things or I'm afraid of these things. Um, and I still feel like it, it is me like those are the things I still love and I'm afraid of and you know whatever and it was really fun to fun to look at and I also think um that sense of growth and accomplishment that comes of uh, from like going through this process is, is really huge and nice to reflect on so yeah I definitely recommend saving it somewhere as a little time capsule are there any more questions oh Shane asks does the style of writing matter much yeah you know that's such a good question um I I have a lot of students who think, oh, I'm applying to this fancy university. I have to write in a very formal tone or I have to use a thesaurus and make sure I'm using these really big fancy words. But the key that matters most of all is that this sounds like a student, right? If it sounds like a 40 year old professor wrote it, they're gonna think someone else wrote this essay, not a 17 year old or 18 year old high school student, right? So it's gotta sound like the student, but at the same time, it can't be super casual and colloquial. Um, I often tell students to write their first draft as if they were writing a letter to a friend. Um, so it just comes out naturally. And then we work to elevate it a little bit right? It probably won't involve the use of a thesaurus unless there's a word that they use over and over and over again, and we just need to find a replacement for that word. But we're not trying to sound, make them sound differently than they actually sound. Um, we don't want them writing a story that is like not accurate or not true or authentic. Um, and we don't want them using language that they're not comfortable with. I actually, one of the things we do at Signet is um, this thing we call peer review. And so, you know, a team of uh, a former admissions officer and a writing specialist and a research analyst will be working with a student, putting together all of these materials, guiding them through the process. And once they've got a pretty final draft of their application, we uh, send it to another team on our, within our staff. And they read it as though they are admissions officers. And they, they say, this is what I'm getting from, from this student. This is what I think they're into. This is what I think you need to change to make their application stronger. Um, and um, I did one of these recently. Uh, I review everything as well as another person on our team. And we did one of these recently for a student, a really sharp student, like excellent grades, test scores, amazing activities. She's a really wonderful girl. Um, and in her essay, she was sort of name dropping um, designers and scholars and musicians and using very complicated sentence structures and um, she was misusing certain words. And um, every time I saw one of those words being misused, it really 
rubbed me the wrong way. It gave me the impression that she was trying to be someone who she's not and trying to convince people she's a lot more sophisticated than you know, your typical 17 year old. And um, I pointed that out to her consultant. Um, and I was like, you know, this, this word is misused. And it makes me think that she's reaching for something. Um, and, you know, the consultant was so happy to hear that because she was like, well, first, I didn't know that this mis word was misused. Um, but second, um, you know, that's not how we want her coming across. She actually is a very quirky, educated, erudite, a young woman and we want to just you know show that but we don't want her to come off as condescending or pedantic or you know any of those things so you really got to watch out for that if they're if they're trying to write in a style they think is fitting of a student who would go to harvard or something like that um, they're often going to be stepping into an area that they're not completely comfortable and they may be communicating something they don't mean to be and there is no one way that a harvard student communicates you know, there's no one way that um, a BU student communicates or whatever school you're, you're um, applying to, they really want um, unique voices. Um, so it's really important that they stay kind of true to themselves. Mia asks, is it okay to have questions such as who knew in the essay? Yeah, actually, I love that one. Um, I have my students use that all the time um, when they're talking about, you know, who knew that Mr. Peanut would lead to uh, a period of personal growth in my life, which is actually uh, an essay that one of my students is writing right now. Um, I think those things are fine. It is colloquial, but it is not, you know, slang or informal. Um, you know, certainly there are things you want to stay away from, like curse words or, you know, controversial statements or derogatory statements, things like that. But I think, you know, rhetorical questions are perfectly fine. Great. I saw you gave everyone my email address. Yes. Definitely feel free to email me. I'm happy to answer more specific questions if you if you have them or if they come up in the next couple of weeks. Okay. Sure. I guess I answered everyone's questions. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks all for joining.